Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I think uh, whatever I'm going to uh, discuss today, basically you, you, you should know this from the Theory of Probabilities uh, course, which obviously uh, supposed to be completed before we go to statistics. Um, still, um, I am within this foundation of statistics uh, theme and um, I believe it's quite appropriate to talk about averages as the main tool in statistics. Well, this lecture is presented on unisor.com um, uh, as part of the course Advanced Mathematics for uh, High School Students. Um, I do suggest you to actually view this from this website rather than from the um, YouTube or anywhere else because the site contains functionality, it contains notes for every lecture um, which basically can serve as a textbook. So I do suggest you to, to go directly to this website and go to statistics and this is the foundations of statistics part and we're talking about statistical averages here. So, as I was saying, statistical averages are a very important tool of statistics. And basically, in this very short presentation, I would like to again remind you why this is the case. Now, I'm saying again because this is actually a repetition of um, the knowledge which you have from theory of probabilities. All right, so what are we talking about? Let's say we have some random variable C, which distribution we don't know, and the purpose of statistics is based on, uh, on some observations of this particular values of this random variable. Make some judgment about its distribution. Okay, now, what, what are the main characteristics of distribution? Well, traditionally, people are very much concerned with uh, the mean value, the expectation, mathematical expectation of this um, random variable C and its variance. Now, variance is basically a measure of how wide the values of this um, random variable are spread around its mean value. Well, it's not always true because, for instance, if you have a Bernoulli random variable which takes values only 0 and 1 with some probabilities p and 1 minus p, well, then let's just make it even simpler. Let's say it's 1 half and 1 half. Then the mean value would be 1 half. But this Bernoulli's random variable will never take the value of one half. So it's not always correct to say that the values of random variable are concentrated around its mean value and um, the variance basically describes how tightly it is concentrated around mean value. In this case it's not true basically. But these are rare cases. In much more often occurring cases in real statistics Situation is real, like I was just saying, that there is some mean value and the values of the random variable are concentrated around this mean value and the variance is the degree of this concentration. If, if the variance is very big, then it's spread around wider. If the variance is very small, then the values are concentrated closer to the mean. And this is very important because let's consider you have a very wide variance. And then you have one single value of this random variable. Does it tell you anything about what is the mean value where the values are supposed to be concentrated around? Well, in, in case of a, a, a very uh, big variance, this is not really a valid point. Um, you, you, you cannot say that the value which you have obtained ob observing the, the random variable signifies anything about the value of the mean of this random variable. However, if it's really concentrated around this mean, if the variance is small, then 
it does make sense to take any particular value which you have observed as some kind of a reasonable evaluation of the mean value. So again, the values which you observe are supposed to signify something about the mean value and the variance of the values which you have observed, let's call it a sample variance, signifies how close your evaluation actually is. Now with this um, some kind of introduction um, let's talk about a very concrete example. So you have a random variable the distribution of which you do not know but you are interested to know the mean value and the variance or not the real values but at least the approximation of these values. So how can that be arranged? Well obviously you conduct experiments and you have some values. You have n experiments and you have n values of this random variable. Well if you just look at these variables uh, at these values um, and do nothing it might actually tell you something about the very I would say uh, not very precise, let's put it this way, not very precise evaluation of the value which um, of the mean value and the variance of this particular um, random variable. You really need to do some calculations to do it more mathematically, so to speak. So I'm going to introduce you to these calculations, which are very simple, and then we will spend some time discussing why this particular calculation is very important. So, obviously, we all know that the best way to approximate the mean value of this random variable, C, if you have n of its observed value, is arithmetic average of these values. Let's call it x with a bar on the top. So, and the statement which people usually do is, okay, the average of these values is this, and that signifies basically relatively precisely, or whatever the measurement of this precision is, um, that this probably would be very close to the mean value of, of Xi. Well, question is, why? And that's what I'm going to discuss right now. Now, Instead of considering n experiments with one value, with one random variable, uh, xi, let's consider that these experiments are independent from each other, and this is a reasonable assumption. And uh, also, let's consider that conditions of the experiment are not changing. So, these x1, x2, xn are actually values of certain random variables c1, c2, etc., cn, which are independent of each other and because conditions of the experiment are exactly the same, the distribution of these is exactly the same as this one. So the distribution of these, which means all the characteristics of distribution, in particular you can talk about mean value, you can variance, etc. So each one of these random variables is exact copy of C, and they are independent of each other. So what do we have? We have x1 as one particular value of C1. x2 is a particular value of C2, and xn is a particular value of uh, Cn. Now, what is this? Well, let's make another random variable, C with a bar on the top, which is average of all these n random variables. So, I can actually say that this is one single value of this random variable. Right? Right. Now, why is it better to consider one uh, value, this one, of this 
random variable rather than n independent values of this variable. Here is why. Let's just examine this particular random variable C. C with a with a bar. The average of, of C. Um, so first of all, let's talk about its uh, mathematical expectation. You know what? Let me just call it eta. So I don't have all these bars, numbers, etc. Okay? Now, what is this? Well, back to theory of probabilities, we know that mathematical expectation of sum of uh, random variables equals to um, sum of their mathematical expectations. So basically, this is, and obviously the factor can be extracted out, so it will be 1 over n, and I will have expectation of c1 plus etc plus expectation of cn. Okay? Now, as I was saying before, c1, c2, cn are exact copy of c. They are independent random variables, but their distribution is exactly the same, which means their mean values is exactly the same as the, as the mean value of, uh, of xi. So that's equal to 1 over n, and here I have n expectations of xi, right? Which means expectation of xi. So what's important is that mathematical expectation of the average of these n independent and identically distributed random variables, xi1, xin, is exactly the same as the expectation of our original random variables. Well, this is good. Now, question is, is this single value which we have obtained observing this particular random variable, is it close to my mean value? So, this is basically described by the variance. But here is the most important difference between Xi and Eta. Let's say sigma square is variance of Xi. What is variance of eta? Well, again, since we know from the theory of probabilities that the variance of a sum of independent, now here is important uh, property of independence, that's where it's playing actually. In um, mathemat mathematical expectation it was not important, but with variance it is important. So sum of independent random variables the variance of this sum is equal to sum of the variances. And if you remember, variance is basically um, the uh, uh, average of deviation of the mean squared, which means that this number n can be brought out in square. And here I have sum of variances variance c1 plus etc plus variance of cn equals to they are all um, independent and identically distributed with xi which means their variance is exactly the same as xi which means it's n times sigma square divided by n square which means sigma square divided by n and this is the most important property of the averaging. The variance of the average of n independent uh, identically distributed random variables is n times smaller than the variance of the original random variable. Now, what does it mean? Well, it means that this value is much closer to the mean value of, of eta 
than any of these guys to the mean value of this, which is the same as mean value of eta, which is whatever I call mu. All right? Which means this is a better a variation, better estimate of the mean value of eta, which is exactly the same as mean value of this, than each one of these guys. And that's the reason why we are using this averaging. If you have n observations and you average them out, then the resulting average will be much closer a variation of the mean value than any of these considered separately. So, that's why average plays such an important role. Now, what also is important is that as n is increasing, my variance is decreasing, which means the values are tighter and, and, and tighter concentrated around my um, uh, mean value. That's number one. The second very important reason, which is much less trivial, is that I was talking about so-called central limit theorem in the theory of probabilities course. Now, it basically says that the sum of random variables um, in some way resembles the normal distribution. And the more components you have in this sum, um, the closer the distribution of the sum is to a normal distribution. So, I can actually consider the variable eta to be almost normally distributed. And normally distributed random variable, you remember this, bell curve, right? This is mathematical expectation. And if you have um, square root of the variance, in this case it's sigma divided by square root of n, then something like uh, minus 2, mm, it's mu minus 2 sigma divided by square root of n. And this would be mu plus uh, 2 sigma divided by square root of n, right? So this is double 2 sigma divided by square root of n, it's double um, uh, standard deviation. Now we know that the probability to be here, to be around the, uh, the, the uh, mean value mu, is something like 95% approximately. So right now what I can say that knowing this gap and knowing, again, approximately, because I cannot really know it exactly. I know approximately. And I also know approximately mu, which is this one. I can say that the concentration of uh, all the values of this random variable are within our approximation of mu minus whatever approximation of my uh, standard deviation. Or, or plus with a, with a certainty level of 95%. So now we are actually getting something very tangible. We can calculate this one and the, the greater n is, as we know, the tighter this value is to the mathematical expectation of, 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 of sigma. So it's a much better evaluation of my mu in this case, the greater the n is. Also, using these values, x1, etc., xn, I can always um, evaluate my, my sigma by basically um, using something which is called a, a sample variance. Now, sample variance is, now, j variance is, is a, a, a mathematical expectation of square of deviation of the random variable from its mean. Now, I don't have random variable, I have n of its values. I don't have mean, I have an estimation of mean. But I can still make the same calculations, which means x1 minus x square plus etc. plus xn minus average value divided by n, right? So this is my average 
square deviation of the values from average value. So these are not all the values my random variable takes. And this is not exactly my mean value for this. However, it's a good estimate. And in some other lecture, I would provide basically uh, some calculations how good this estimate is. But it's an estimate which you can use instead of sigma square. Now uh, this you can use instead of mu. So you have basically all components. And that what allows you to evaluate what exactly the distribution of C, maybe not the entire distribution, but at least its mean and, 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 and variance um, are. And where we can expect the values of this random variable to be. All right, so basically that's it. I just wanted to um, to make some, I would say, uh, statistical foundation uh, of using averages um, before um, going into any more detailed statistical um, researches, etc. Average, again, my, my point is that the averages in statistics play extremely important role and I was just trying to give you the foundation why the reason why they're playing such an important role. This is basically why. Everything is concentrated here in this and in denominator. That the more data you have, the more precisely you can evaluate your uh, mean value of this guy. All right, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.